Yeah, Watkins, a lot of history. Originally a Formula One track in town. Then they moved, built this track up the hill, right up the hill from the lake. A lot of history with F1, sports car racing, six hours of Watkins Glen. Um, Porsche has a lot of history here as well. Uh, I have a lot of history in a Porsche uh, in the six hours of the Glen. And then obviously to be driving these brand new cup cars at this track, sprint race style, as fast as you can go. These cars are perfect for this track, really high speed, a lot of flow. And then the famous bus stop, which is just like one of the coolest sections, unbelievably fast, fourth gear, surprising how fast it is through there. I've never been to the track ever in my life. Uh, my first laps were in a Taylor Dunn yesterday. So it's been a pretty crazy ride, to be honest with you, over the last couple of days. Really high speed, uh, different from what I'm used to. You know, I'm trying to chip away at time, but there's a lot of high risk here. And so just finding places that I can safely chip away first and then getting closer and closer to the edge is what my goal has been. Kick some ass, Dimitri, all right, buddy? Qualifying was better in terms of pace from practice yesterday. We're on some fresh tires, um, but there's still room for improvement, and I'm going to try to show that in the race. It's holding on really good, and the rear's starting to push. You can feel the rear starting to. Uh, this morning, qualified P5, and actually just a couple of tenths off P3 and P4. There's a big gap to P1 and P2, which I don't really like. Uh, but also a pretty nice half second gap to P6 behind me. So I'm in a really good spot. Hopefully we get a good start in the race and we'll see what happens. It's so cool what you can do today. I mean, the fact that one, we can have a sim at the track shows how well GPX is built like a, just a modular system that's easy, but also that we can have our actual cars with the actual setups on them at the actual track where we're racing. It's pretty sweet. It's really cool. We got the deluxe scheme for the number 11 car, for the simp. Let's see if we can make it work. Our guy, Craig Salter in the UK, he's been making our team down to the finest detail, because our guys race in um, PCA Pro GD3 Cup sim racing. Lauren Heinrich in the 12 car, and Dimitri in the 11 car. All good, Greg? All good? Yeah, I'm RV, I'm RV life, so there, I got no time to shave. I can't be using the water. I heard these are the hardest ones to drive on that game. Oh, not even, but yeah, like by a mile. Yeah. Like, I can't think of anything that's even half as difficult to drive. You get like a Cayman, you could get good on that on the center, you could drive any car. Yeah. Stand by for action. Race one of two for the Porsche Carrera Cup North America. <laughs> presented by the Cayman Islands. They're all moving across to the inside, but they're doing it as a pair of, of lines of cars. Wow, that's a noise as they go past us down into the first corner. And a brilliant start by the two Kelly Moss Road race drivers who have stayed in their grid positions as they head up Whoa. through the S's. Oh, that's going to be a big incident and back into the middle of the field. That is the number 77 car that somehow did not get picked up by everyone else. And that will be a safety car. We will see that bright red machine again. And... Holy oh. fucking flip. Who was that? Yeah. Dimitri was mixed up with that. Yeah, he almost got fucked on that one. Holy shit. That guy was going on the outside. He was on the outside of Dimitri, trying to come around and get that up. And that will be a safety car. We will see that bright red machine again. And. That is Travis Wiley. What's your take? You think they're going to call that a racing incident? I mean, it is. Cold tires. I saw him twitch, but just unfortunate for him. 
Yeah, definitely not intentional, no fault. To, no, I mean, he just lost the front. Yeah. DeMarco's got sideways in car number 11. Yeah, he, they, they, they kind of squeezed each other, didn't they, going up the hill there. They were sort of side, they were overlapping, so Correct. they were really side by side. They're kind of overlapping, and then DeMarco's car got sideways. Just to the right of the, of the exhaust pipes, there's a little bit of a deformation, deformation. Right on the QR code, which can be very painful. Back to green flag racing. Nice restart from everybody concerned. Lee Keane in the number 12, sitting in fifth position. I spoke about him earlier on. 311 RS Motorsport. And Kai van Bolo. The man from the Netherlands weaves his way down the straight in celebration and takes the checkered flag. Uh, it was pretty good. I mean, it was just, I would say boring, but that can be a good a good thing sometimes. Started fifth, finished fifth, ran right behind third and fourth the whole time. Really good, clean, consistent laps, uh, hard laps. There was a big incident in the beginning. Um, I had a little bit of a slow start, so me and McCain got together on the exit of turn one, which is just right here. That's the only mark on the car, which is good. It's not on the car technically, it's on the tire. The car felt really good. Uh, just because this race went, you know, the way it did today means nothing at all about the race tomorrow. It could be completely a different deal. So yeah, we'll see. Dimitri, you know, definitely uh, had a bit more pace in qualifying, just didn't have a great qualifying run, a little bit of traffic and stuff like that. So uh, he started a little bit further back than probably he should have been. When you start a little bit out of place, sometimes you get tangled up uh, with some cars. So he got tangled up, got hit in the, the back, which is you know nothing he could do, just got rammed in the back. It happened to me last year. So he recovered well from that, I think, uh, just kind of mentally in the car to you know grind out some laps. Red Porsches are in now. Ferrari's not the only one that can wear red. It's actually all downhill to the paddock, so it's a pretty easy ride. It's brutal on the way back up, though. So probably about 2011, 2012 on sticker tires. It would be flat for like, you know, two or three laps, qualifying run, but then you had to lift. So, Cars get better and better, and you know, all of all of the career cup cars, you know, are flat. All these cars are flat, so and it's pretty easy flat. But you still, you still need to drive the right line. Like if you don't drive the right line, the grip level goes way down, and you'll get in trouble. Uh, and then it, it gets tight right here. There's a tunnel. There's a tunnel when you come into the track right there, so. The walls get really tight. It's kind of a bridge for the racetrack. You need to be on the right line. If you hit one of these walls in here, it's never good. We got a race, race two. That's it, race two this morning. Um, good solid race. One yesterday, we got sticker tires today. I know some guys went out with stickers yesterday. And it's already pretty warm, so and it's gonna warm up a lot in the next hour or two. So, um, yeah, hopefully we're in pretty good shape. Again, a little bit of a gap to the sixth place behind me. And second, third, lap time-wise, actually third, fourth, and fifth qualifying. I'm fifth, but was within uh, less than a tenth altogether, so. We'll see what happens. Hopefully I can get a little bit tighter, a little bit more pressure on the guys in front. Um, and again, it's a new day, new race, totally different deal. Anything can happen. That's a rookie. He's out there developing as part of the program. Mistakes can happen. We've just got to learn how to 
reduce the mistakes and turn those mistakes into more speed and get them up front. Lee had a great race. Uh, third, fourth, and fifth. Their lap times in qualifying and in the race were just right there. The top two cars, they were kind of in another league. But I'm proud of Lee. He's out there fighting, fighting against Barker Thompson and Trent Nestep. <laughs> he's technically a pro-am, but because of experience, he's not. Um, but he's up there fighting right up at the front of the field. Dimitri will get there. He's got the speed. Um, we've just got to get him, get his race craft up a bit, which will come with time. I mean, Lee's been doing this for how long? I don't know. I can't count that high, but you know, he's been doing it for a long time, and he's sharing everything he can with Dimitri. Dimitri's absorbing it, soaking it all in. Um, today's another day. I'm hoping for a clean race, and after this race, we'll reassess and see you know where we can improve. That's the goal. to let the Michelin guy let us in there. Hey, you know, I'm at, we were at 31, man. Can you just let it go? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were, we were up there. Yeah. Great weather again today, Jeremy, and the front of the grid looking remarkably similar to how it did yesterday. minutes on the clock, a full tank of racing fuel, Michelin racing tires, a hot day, a sunny day, and the second race of the weekend at Watkins Glen International for the Porsche Carrera Cup North America, presented by Visit CaymanIslands.com, gets underway, the two Kelly Moss racing drivers just about control the start, but they ball off both are very wide indeed. coming together at turn one. Dominic Lecour in car number 30. A full course yellow. Oh. And it, it was, was the number 92 yeah, of Joel Lombardo. OK, safety car lights are out. They will come in this time. We'll restart this time. Safety so car is in. With just ready. 24 minutes still to run. Green, 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 green. Good battle for eighth position. Varanchowski in the 13, white, red, and black car. Down at turn six, the black with red striping. That's the Number 11 of Dimitri DeMarcos, that's another 311 RS car. And then Michael McCann from McCann Racing with the number eight car. They're all having a scrap for eighth position. Got to run. And Varan Chusky uh, still battling out for their little personal scrap going on for, uh, for uh, eighth and ninth, isn't it? As they go through. A couple of distinctively coloured cars as well. With the checkered flag in the air. Checkers out, checkers out. Nice drive, Lee. Nice drive. Way to hang on the tires. 
Nice job, Dimitri. Nice job. I'm still sweating, yeah. Yeah, it's helping me cool off. I didn't realize it in the car, but as soon as the race was over, I realized how hot I was. It was pretty hot out there. Pace was good most of the race, but at the end, I lost the rear tires a little bit. But really happy with my pace. Uh, the beginning of the race and kind of middle of the race. Actually, started to gain back a little bit on third and fourth in front of me in the middle of the race, but then I kind of pushed the tire too hard and then that was it. But good clean race, I mean, two top five finishes. You know, super clean. Not super exciting, but kind of the same as yesterday. So. It could be a lot worse. Today was much better than yesterday for sure. We started P8 uh, versus P9. Uh, it was good that we were a little bit further ahead, but it made the first turn a little bit more difficult because now I was starting on the outside. Um, I had a little bit of a sketchy situation with Fisher through turn two, and I decided to play it safe and let him just take it. And then, you know, we had a couple good battles throughout the race. Pace was good. Um, the yellow flag just didn't really help us out. But overall, um, I'm, I'm happy with the result. Um, it showed that we were able to manage the tires and keep the pace good throughout the race. And, uh, you know, I'm still learning the track, so, you know, pulled away a lot of good information from that race that I can use moving forward. You know, as a team, you know, every event for me, I feel like I get closer with the guys. Um, our communication is really good. We were able to make some setup changes to the cars that I feel helped a lot. So I, I'm really happy with the progress that we're making this year. And this was just another event where we add to the progress that we've been making.